I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you joined us this week. Hopefully this week will not be a somber week like last week. Last week was just kind of, I don't know, sad because of Steve's jo Steve Jobs passing away. Difficult to say that quickly. All right, let's go into the blog, shall we? Of course, the blog we're talking about is Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. That's D-R-B-I-L-L <clears throat> dot C-C. <clears throat> uh, without the throat clearing part, actually, as you see here on the screen, <laughs> it's kind of hard to type in a <clears throat> in there. Yes. Okay. Anyway, first item we're going to look at. By the way, we are proud members of Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Just saying. All right. First item, Netflix kills Quickster. <laughs> As I say, well, that didn't last long. <laughs> Reed Hastings, the Netflix CEO, you know, he's the one that said that he was going to start Quickster to differentiate it from Netflix. But apparently the next Netflix customer said, dude, we don't want to go to another website. We only want to go to one website to rule them all. Ah! So they said, okay, whatever. We'll do the DVDs and we'll do the Blu-rays through Netflix as well as doing the streaming. See, I am all about the streaming. I just want streaming. I don't care about the DVDs. They can keep those. You know what I'm saying? I mean, by the way, I have my tablet. <laughs> That's, I'm bringing it up here so you can see it. Anyway, I have my tablet so I can, I can show things like, like looky here, see that? How cool is that? That is the new Roku. This is the next item we're talking about here. Roku has announced a lower price $50 unit. Now, the article here says $50. I suspect, given their pricing ranges, that it's actually going to be $49.95. You know how that goes. Anything with nines in it sounds cheaper. It's just a psychological thing. So I suspect that's what it's going to be. Now, this particular unit, while being somewhat more colorful. Let me bring it back so you can see it again. See? <laughs> it's more colorful than the regular one, uh, but it doesn't have all the same features. It does have HD-ness. Yes. It does have uh, wirelessness, of course. But here's what they say about it. Roku announced its lowest call streaming media player yet, also adding a new HBO Go service to the service lineup which will be for more than just this particular player, obviously. The $50 Roku LT offers the same Linux-based operating system. Go Linux! Netflix support 720p video playback quality and support for 300 channels, as does the $60, which is, see, actually $59.95. That's why I think the other one is $49.95, but it, that's just besides the point. Um, where did I leave off reading? Oh yeah, same as the $60 Roku 2 HD, but jettisons the micro SD port and Bluetooth connections according to the company. So in other words, they, they took off a few things to make it cheaper. Yes, uh, Roku LT joins three revised Roku boxes released in July. The Roku 2 HD supports 720p playback and the Roku 2 XD moves to 1080p. That's the one I have, of course. And of course has the the remote control that gives you the ability to play Angry Birds. Ha <laughs> ha! So, dude, it's totally worth the $79 for that. Actually, I, I think I have the $99 one, which is, what does it add? Oh, the USB port, yes. Yes. So, very cool stuff. Dude, you just, I tell you, here's what you gotta do. Buy one of these Start using IPTV. You'll like it. And oh, by the way, go to my website, drbill .cc, click on the Roku ad, and you'll help out the doctor, too. Speaking of helping the doctor, our 
Sponsor this week is Citrix Systems once again, which of course I'm a Citrix administrator, so I'm down with that. But GoToMeeting is our particular part of Citrix sponsor this week. And GoToMeeting, not just plain old GoToMeeting like it used to be, but now they've upgraded it. It now has HD faces. So you can see people's faces that you're communicating with in full HD glory. How cool is that? And if you go to this URL, gotomeeting.com, and you type in the keyword podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, podcast, then you will also be helping the doctor because you'll be getting a 30-day free trial free of Go to meeting with HD Faces and helping the doctor as well. Dude, how cool is that? I'm telling you. Okay, next item, let's look at this. Next item is LibreOffice goes post-PC. Everything these days is about post-PC. Everybody wants to get away from the PC era. Well, okay, but the cool thing is that what they're talking about here is that LibreOffice is going to have a branch for web, iOS, and Android. Dude! In other words, they're going to support more platforms. And particularly the web one excites me because, see, that means if you have an HTML5 browser, you'll be able to use LibreOffice across the web as a web-based application. Oh, that's just going to be so often. Awesome. Often. <laughs> often awesome. <laughs> anyway, here it is often awesome. Reminds me of Star Trek. You say, Dr. Bill, everything reminds you of Star Trek. <laughs> yes, it does. But it reminds me of the nickname for Data's creator, Dr. Noonien Soong, whose nickname was often Wrong Soon. I don't know why it reminded me, but it did. Whoa! That, drum roll, is telling us that the Geek Software of the Week, the Geek Software of the Week this week is... Dragon Disc. Dragon Disc. Eh, strange name. But what it is, what it is, is an Amazon S3 client. Now you may be saying, Dr. Bill, what? What do you mean an Amazon S3 client? Well, Amazon S3 is a service that gives you cloud storage. Storage in the cloud. It's so fluffy. Anyway, I got distracted. But the point is, is it gives you all this storage, but then what do you do with it? Well, you need a client like this. And this is a free client for cloud storage called Dragon Disk. It gives you Windows, Windows Explorer-ish-ishness as a file management for your files on Amazon S3. I am having a hard time forming words. What can I say? It has any, I'm going to read their propaganda here. It has an intuitive graphical user interface. It is cross-platform, works on Windows, Mac OS X, or Linux. OS 10 for you Mac-ish people. Multi-threaded HTTP, HTTPS engine. Job queuing, copy or move files between Amazon S3 accounts. So you can share them back and forth. <clears throat> Folder synchronization, copy, or excuse me, cut, copy, paste, or drag and drop. Nah, nah, nah. Rename files and folders, rename filters, BitTorrent, time limited, and sign URLs generator. URLs. Amazon S3 credentials encryption, file integrity control, metadata editor, proxy support, permissions, inheritance, apply privileges, or permissions to child objects. Keep permissions and metadata for existing files when overriding. Support versioning. Support C names. It's common names. Never mind. Support for external buckets. Support for reduced redundancy storage, RRS. Compression and encryption using AES and Blowfish and 3DES. So cool. So that is our Geek Software of the Week. Very geeky Geek Software of the Week. Not everybody has a need for that. Just saying. But if you are an Amazon S3 customer, 
and you're looking for a client, there you go. Okay, next item, Windows 8 Task Manager. I like having my, my tablet here where I can just glance down. Otherwise, I'd be going all the way over here looking at the screen and you'd be going, what's he doing? Anyway, tablets are just so cool. Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, the next item, yes. Windows 8 Task Manager. Meet the Windows 8 Task Manager. Well, it is simple. It is, uh, it is not as geeky. So hopefully people will be able to use it much more easily. Now, other than that, what much can you say about a task manager? It's a task manager. Just saying, let me go to the article. Great thing about a tablet, I can actually click and go to the actual article that I'm clicking and referencing from the website. It says it is a simpler task manager. I said that. Here are the details. Power users looking for more information on what's going on in their system can still get it by clicking the More Details button. This will open up a more familiar tabbed view for Task Manager, but Microsoft has also made some important tweaks to this view as well. And it goes on talking about Task Manager. Which I gotta admit, you know, that's okay, but I'm not terribly excited about Task Manager. But I thought it was interesting that they had a little introduction, so I wanted to share it with you as a, an article in the blog. Okay, now, this item I'm a little more excited about. Google comes up with a web language. Now you know computer languages, right? You've got like C, and BASIC, and FORTRAN, which is formula translation. It's very mathy, math-based. Well, anyway, there's, there's different programming languages for different people and different functions and things. Uh, C, for instance, is, is a really, it's a geeky language that a lot of people write programs like, uh, like Photoshop, things like that. That's written in C. Uh, so, what Google is doing, again, the post-PC era, I see everybody's talking post-PC, uh, they're talking about the fact that, well, now that they've got the Google browser being so awesome, then all you need is the Google browser and HTML5, and you'll be able to do so many things. You remember, wait, okay, let me back up here for just a moment. If you go to my other blog, Vertzine, actually it's one of several blogs that I do, but V-I-R-T-Z-I-N-E dot com, I'll put it right here, and that is the virtualization and cloud computing magazine that's online. I have a web video there linked from YouTube showing VMware's App Blast, which is applications going across the web <clears throat> with no client and HTML5. It's going to be awesome. Well, imagine if you will that you're a programmer I know several of you out there are programmers, and you wanted to have a language that you could write specifically for the web. Well, that's what Dart is. Google has come up with Dart, a structured web language. They say, Dart is a new class-based programming language for creating structured web applications. Developed with a goal of simplicity, efficiency, and scalability, the Dart language combines powerful new language features with familiar language constructs into a clear, readable syntax. And then it describes more about itself. Now, I'm going to lay the tablet over here on my desk and talk to you a moment. You see, this is why I'm so excited. Because we'll be able to write programs for the web itself and eliminate the need for the underlying platform of the computer itself so that anything that runs a web browser, okay, that could be a tablet, like my tablet here. It could be a phone, like my phone, which I left in there. <laughs> or anything that has a browser. It doesn't have to be a PC. See, that gets back to the whole post-PC thing. Anyway, 
here's the thing. So you could then have applications written in this Dart language that would actually run on the web and it wouldn't matter what your platform is. It would remove the physical layer of dependency of the PC from the whole paradigm. Yes. I'm just talking so highfalutin. Synergy paradigm. You know, anyway. Point is, it's going to be cool. So, that is something to look forward to. Now, will I learn to program in Dart? I may try. I don't know. I'm not a great programmer. I, I tend to... Programming does something to me. <laughs> Relax. Calm. <laughs> and see, that's what it does. It, it amps me up. I get to programming and I'm, I'm writing code. And I just... I can't let go of it. I have to keep doing it. Until I get it just right. It's quite tiring. So I don't do it very often. I do a little scripting here and there, but programming, mm, no. I leave that to the people who do it without even thinking. People who don't even have to worry about syntax because they have it all in their brains. Brains. Yeah. Am I calling programmers zombies? Well, maybe a little. Anyway. Enough of that. Remember, until next time, that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.